feeling but <laughs> Good. Well then you'll surely enjoy the next 57 minutes of the welcome song. <laughs> Sing along if you know the word. He's Archie. We know what the other thinks. Because we're absolutely, totally in love.
I witnessed a terrible murder and did nothing to stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, my child. I was just washing my hands. Please continue with I witnessed a terrible murder. And uh, what was the murder weapon? I think it was a gun. Oh no, wait, it was definitely a huge axe. <laughs> and uh, did you catch sight of the murderer? Well, it was very dark, so I couldn't see very clearly. They were definitely wearing a long floor length gown. <laughs> so it must have been a woman. Yes, it must have been a woman. Wait, now I come to think that they also had something white around their neck. It looked a bit like a necklace or a collar. Wait a second. Mrs. Pearson has a white necklace! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it must have been Mrs. Pearson. No way, it couldn't have been Mrs. Pearson. She was stood right next to me when I saw the murder. <laughs> <laughs> what? I witnessed the power of God's forgiveness. Uh, carry on with your confession, my child. Thank you, Father. I just can't believe I didn't do it. And of course, it's such a shame that Biggins the baker had to see it all. <laughs> well, thank you, Father. I feel so much better. <laughs> oh, um, just before you go, my child, uh, could you tell me if anyone else committed the terrible sin of witnessing this crime? Oh, well, of course, Andrew Johnson, the Sailor Masochist, was there. <laughs> Ooh, you again? Oh, you know what I did there? No, 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 I don't do axes, no. Too far, too far. Safety work, safety work. Coin pass, coin pass there! Right, are we done here? Surely no one else could have seen it. Yeah, no, I think that's it. No, no, wait, there was one more person. There was one more person. Who was it? He was definitely wearing a sombrero. All right, yeah, Chris. Chris Bagnall. Shame he had to see it, really, just before going on holiday to the Indian Ocean. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you in a week. <laughs>
about communication skills, you know, taking history from a patient, making sure they feel comfortable, that sort of thing. Cool. What were you up to? Oh, nothing much. Just went out with my girlfriend. Okay. Could you tell me about that from the very beginning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we've been working quite a lot lately, so we want to go out. Right. So we thought, hey, let's go for lunch. All right. And I want to go to teriyaki. It's my favourite sushi restaurant, but she actually can't eat fish, oh. so we didn't go in there. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> so we thought, hey, let's go out in the evening instead. And we went to sort of film about six o'clock at six. <coughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to summarise to make sure I got all of it. <laughs> so this morning, you and your girlfriend were deciding what to do in the evening. You wanted to go to Teriyaki, but sadly, that wasn't possible. <laughs> and then two of you went to the cinema at six o'clock. Is there anything else you can think of that could have been important? <laughs> <laughs> we went to the cinema by taxi. Is that relevant? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a few more specific questions now. What film did you see? The Hobbit. Okay, and how long was it? Just right. Two hours. Okay. Right. Right. I'm going to ask you another question now. This is a question we ask everybody. Did you like the higher frame rate? <laughs> no. Okay, that's a question we ask everybody. Yeah. And if you're going to rate the film on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst film you've ever seen, <laughs> and 1 is absolutely fine, where would you put it? 10 is like the feeling of labour, isn't it? Definitely. 9. <laughs> so, 9 is actually pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty bad. How do you rate the book? It's okay. Yeah, I read the books actually. <laughs> Water. Yes, absolutely. A bottle? Bottle. 
of my study. Go on. Commence the music. each other letters comprised only of hyphens. Really oh. nice. But is that maybe why I got 56 phone calls this morning asking for our address? Oh, sorry, that must have been so annoying. So I'd have stayed with them and told us to fuck off. Uh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Why can't you just tell me how I'm doing? Why do we have to have this weird meeting? 
Look, Darren, I know you find this weird, but I just think it'd be better for you to receive constructive feedback, <coughs> not from your dad, but from your biology teacher. I don't want the roles to get too confusing. Is that okay? Yeah, fine. Well, look, here he comes now. <laughs> 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 Mr. Pierce, but you can call me Leon. <laughs> Excellent, Leon. Now, as you know, I've been a biology teacher in the school for many a year now, and I've seen a... Hang on. Are you the same Mr. Pierce that's won the Hollymount Science Teacher Award seven years running? <laughs> 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 No, I mean yes, but no. <laughs> Didn't realize you're a man of science yourself, Leon. <laughs> well, I doubt it. I mean, the experiment you set Darren for his homework with the potatoes in the water, that was incredible. <laughs> ah, yes. Osmosis. If only the biology I teach my students would filter into their heads in a process akin to osmosis. <laughs> 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 anyway, Mr. Pierce, please continue. <laughs> well, as you know, Leon, students at this school are expected to achieve an A grade in their exams. A? <laughs> I said an A grade. <coughs> oh, levels. Jesus, he's that. They call GCSEs that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh, Leon, you slay me. <laughs> <laughs> Students at this school are expected to achieve an A grade in their exams, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if Darren will do this. He's quite, well, he's quite lazy. What do you mean by that, Mr. Pierce? <laughs> well, all I'm saying is that he appears quite unmotivated in lessons, and often these problems can stem from a parental figure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your tone, Mr. Pierce. <laughs> Maybe from a father who's emotionally unstable. <laughs> Stable. Leon, please don't do anything rash! How do you know about my rash? <laughs> okay, well that's all time up, Darren. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. That's been very productive. Always a pleasure, Leon. Darren, who have you got next? Ms. Robinson for history. Oh, Ms. Robinson. I actually know where she is, so I'm just going to go and fetch her. Don't want to be Darren. Ha, ha, ha.
fuck off, Beyonce! <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> I'm never going to be ready for your jelly. <laughs> This is why Michelle never came home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your attitude is not conducive to creativity. <laughs> needs to charm the host for cash. With me in the hot seat today is Rob. Hi there. Hi Rob. So Rob, do you think of yourself as a bit of a charmer? Well, uh, I'm no magician, but let's just say I have a few cards up my sleeve. <laughs> right, well Rob, <laughs> let's start you off with some soft level complimenting. Rob, for 100 pounds, Pay me a compliment. Like a shirt. Thanks for 500 pounds. Pay me a compliment. You're a good listener. Oh, what, what was that? You're a good listener. I heard you the first time. Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rob, for £1,000, pay me a compliment. Like the way you smile at me. <laughs> Rob, I've got a check here. <laughs> for £500. You can hold it. <laughs> but we don't want to give you that. No, Rob. I'm going to have to shove this check up my arsehole because you've just won one thousand
this Capri Sun board meeting. Without vitamin C, you get scurvy. Fuck fruit shoots. Our <laughs> <laughs> agenda number one is our slogan a little weird. And number two, is there enough Capri Sun and a Capri Sun pouch? Okay, so we've got Mark. Hello. We've got Dan. Yeah. Sean. Hello. Bro. And Chris. Chris, can you hear me? Chris? <laughs> yep, yeah, and joining you from Mauritius. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> is there enough Capri Sun mm -hmm. and a Capri Sun pouch? Mm -hmm. The industry is having a great deal. Sorry guys, um, uh, I forgot to mention this uh, isn't actually a live link, uh, this is a pre-recorded video from uh, Mauritius. <laughs> because I forgot my Skype details. <laughs> Well, well I, I, I know you guys so well, so I, I know exactly what you're going to say. Chris, when did you record it? Mm, uh, on balance, a mouth for a vagina, but... <laughs> actually, I do. Um, and uh, I've been having a think about potential rebrandings of the company. Now, um, what does a consumer think uh, when they hear Capri Sun? They, uh, they think sun. Uh, when they hear, what are they? Sun, they think holiday. They think sunny holiday abroad. What do they think when they hear sunny holiday abroad? Mexico! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, they think Mexico. <laughs> better way to up our Capri sunny credentials than to market ourselves as a Mexican company. It's fun, it's marketable, you know, it's not... Oh my god, Chris? Chris? <laughs> right, who's next? Open your eyes. <laughs> I'm flying! Did you bring the parachutes? <laughs> Hello there everybody, welcome to another meeting of Unusual Fetishists Anonymous. We have a new member today, everybody. This is Steve. <laughs> Would you care to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Steve, and, and I'm an unusual fetishist. <laughs> you were a little bit uncomfortable there, Steve. <laughs> Just remember you're in a safe place now with people who are just like you. For example, Dan here is aroused by clapping, and Jim here is aroused by... By names. Actually, it's just the name Steve. <laughs> Good having you here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm aroused by... I'm, a, I'm briefly Australian's condition, but I'm really <laughs> I'm aroused by lengthy personal monologues. Please continue. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ever since I was 18, mm. I've <laughs> <laughs> always felt I didn't right. need to make any <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop! Right, I'm not sure I'm quite comfortable with Don't that. Don't worry, Steve! Oh! <laughs> None of us chose this, apart from Amy, whose fetch is choosing a different weird fetish every week. <laughs> what is it this week, Amy? Capri Sun. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> At least your fetish is cyclical. Look for Rob here. He's aroused by his own erection. I've been saying erection for the last 12 years. <laughs> Rob's not very well endowed, is he? <laughs> Please tell us about yourself. Well, it is hard amongst you know, understanding people such as yourselves. 
ever since I was 18, I've always been attracted to women's breasts. What? I've always got a kick out of women's breasts. I think that's normal. Um, I've always been attracted to women with an hourglass dizzy. All heterosexual men have that. <laughs> and women with a symmetrical face. These are classical features of a <laughs> Sometimes when I'm in bed with my girlfriend, I have the urge to put my... That's what sex is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not an unusual fetishist then. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm glad we were able to help him. Shall we begin the orgy? <laughs>
carpet. Magic carpet? <laughs> the only magic carpet I know about is the thick layer of pubic hair which covers my pudenda. <laughs> <laughs> Children, it's the anti panto day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Jasmine, we're together at last. I know, and how wonderful to see you after so much time apart. Tell you what spends a long time apart my legs. <laughs> I like to keep them at a fair distance to ensure an easy passage for sexual intercourse. That way, I can. Slide my partner in more gently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes, um, interrupted again now. Oh, right, no. Sorry about that. <laughs> Jasmine, I need to tell you, I found this magic lamp which grants you three wishes. If I had three wishes, <laughs> I think I'd go for a blonde, an Italian, and a little weird guy just filled me. <laughs> <laughs> now we me having sex with the other two gentlemen. I hope that was unclear. <laughs> Again, sorry for interrupting. What would you wish for if you had three wishes? Oh, me? I don't know. Perhaps a little kitten. I could call him Sparkles and play with him all day. I play with my very own kitten every day. <laughs> synonym for the word pussy. <laughs> it's got a euphemism associated with the vagina. <laughs> However, I do enjoy playing with my very own sparkles. And by that, of course, I mean my littoral region. <laughs> Until I indeed climax. <laughs> that was unnecessary. that, <laughs> <laughs> you. But anyway, Jasmine, it's going to be so difficult to overthrow Jafar. Tell you what's not difficult. <laughs> Get me to have sex with you. <laughs> it's really easy. I'd literally have sex with anyone. <laughs> I know. I'm so worried about it. Tell you what I'm worried about.
this knife. That's the end of the sketch. That's up. That's better, I think.
because, if you know the answer, what subfield of physics deals with plasma, ah. such as Bristol Daniels? Magneto hydromagnetics. Correct, and your bonus. Ah. Hi, sorry, I'm the producer on the show. Sometimes we just need to go back and re-record sections for clarity. So you've got the points. I just need to say the answer a little bit more clearly. Is that right? We're just going to re-record that answer. Thanks, Jeremy. Take it away from there. Thanks, Ron. What subfield of ah. physics is Bristol Daniels? Magneto hydromagnetics. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. <laughs> now for your bonus question, Bristol, you are free to confer for this one. In geometry, a solid figure with many faces. It's, it's a circle, guys. I know it's a circle. <laughs> it's almost definitely a circle. Nominate <coughs> It's a circle. No, the correct answer was polygon. Now for a slight ten. But <laughs> if you know the answer, the Latin expression vox populi. Sometimes short. Right. Bristol Robinson. Is it fantastic, Mr. Fox? What? No! <laughs> Bristol, you didn't like what? Sometimes short to vox pop, usually translated into what English expression? Uh, Lee, space with uh, the voice of the common people. Correct. <laughs> no, very uh, expression. Sorry, again, Fitzmith, yeah, you get the answers, I just need to say that answer a little bit more clearly. Could you practice? The voice of the common people. Yeah, that's not Okay, so if we could just re-record that, that question, yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. What? No! Bristol, you lose five points. Sometimes short of the box usually translated into what English expression? Leave, six minutes. But why is the calm in your car?
<laughs> and again, I hear these waters rolling from their mound springs with soft little murmur. Once again, do I behold these stiff and lofty cliffs that on wild secluded sea and press thoughts of more deep seclusion and connect the landscape with the quiet of the sky. Time has come when I again. <laughs> Repose here under this dark sycamore <laughs> and view these plots of cottage ground, these orchard trucks. <laughs> Their unripe fruits are in one green hue and lose themselves in rows and coffees. <laughs> Beauty's forms through a long absence have not been to me as the landscape of my man's eye, but off in lonely rooms amid the din of towns and cities. <laughs> I have no In hours of weariness, sensation is sweet, felt in the blood and felt along the heart, and passing even into my pure mind with tranquil restoration. The voice of the common people. <laughs> Studies have shown that muscle memory can retain movement information for up to 24 hours. We've injected our suspects with a serum that will force the muscles to reenact their movements, giving us some indication as to who done it. Right, it should kick in about now. <laughs> this is bad. Hopefully, we're not doing half this is what better, I suppose. CCTV back from the brutal murder. I think you're going to want to look at this. Well, we've just done the unnecessary elaborate serum then. It's pretty inclusive, but we might as well take a look. Pop it on. Yeah. All right, suspect number one. <laughs> Right. So Chris, I think 
I'd like you to phone Tony, please. Okay, you get Tony on the line, please. <laughs> Hello, Tony. It's Chris Tarrant here. He wants to be a millionaire. Yeah. Uh, with me, I have Carol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's on the £32,000 question. You can have 30 seconds. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, your time starts now. Tony, hi. Carol? It's been a while, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, Tony. It's ten years. <laughs> Tony, I'm here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Well, I know where you are. You're with him. Did you remember when you used to make me wear that mask? Mask? It was a Chris Tarrant mask, Carol. No! That's not... Tony, listen, I want to ask you about model trade. Oh, now you're interested! <laughs> you never used to care. You just said, bet Chris doesn't have model trains. <laughs> but what's he like in real life, Carol? Still glad you left me. Why? Oh, he's an Pratt, so why not leave you? Do you know when the first <laughs> model train was... Boo, shit. <laughs> Do not. 
1,000 balloons falling from the sky. I said, how about 1,000 balloons falling from the sky? Damn it, Jeremy, you had one job. I know, Jeremy is so lazy. So not the balloons. This relationship up with. What? I know this is a bad time to do this. I just want to tell you now in case you plan on giving dramatic anniversary surprises again. You haven't planned anything hmm? have you? No. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no surprises, Richard. Dick of no surprises, that's what they call me. I didn't find out why. Right, yeah, it's just the last year you did that whole intricately choreographed interpretive dance routines of Bonnie Tyson, so you look into the heart. Yeah, with the finale. Yeah, the finale. The grand finale. I wouldn't go that far. Right. <laughs> I just wanted to nip it in the mud now in case you plan anything crazy like that again. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I would, I would so. never do anything like that again. <laughs> Right, I've got 30 witnesses, one left, prepare to die! No! <laughs> 